Welcome to Because. We have a great show planned for you today. We'll start off by talking to one, the only, Mayor Larson. We'll stop by the studio to tell us all the latest, greatest things going on in the village of Schaumburg. Second, Superintendent of uh, Parks, Todd King, will stop by to talk to me regarding Olympic Park and the ice rinks that we have set up there. And then we'll finish off today's episode with Alyssa as she talks about how to stick to your fitness resolutions in 2015. Stick around. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Because. I'm here with a man who needs no introduction, but I'll, I'll give him his introduction. Mayor Errol Larson, thanks for coming in this morning. Well, thanks, I appreciate thanks, you thanks. making time. We just uh, heard uh, Mayor Larson at the SBA Good Morning Breakfast giving his state of uh, Schaumburg. He did an awesome job as usual giving us an update. And now we're fortunate enough to have him in the Because studio and, and uh, going to get some snippets from uh, what, uh, how the recap of 2014 and what's, what's new for 2015. So how, in a word, what, what would you say about 2014? How did, how did the, the village finish up? I finished up very well. Very well. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not over yet for us because our, our uh, fiscal year right. is different from, from yours probably, but uh, uh, we're, we're getting more hotels coming into Chambord. We have Right now we have 25 hotels. We're going to be breaking ground for five of them. Uh, this year, okay, a and uh, so I mean, how many towns have, can boast that many hotels? Right, yeah, especially in the economic climate, obviously improving, but I think that's a testament because those, the hoteliers really do their their homework when it comes to trends and, and occupancy and those type of things. So I think that's very encouraging. Our convention center is actually bearing fruit. That's a, that's, that's what's happening. You're, you're finding that because of of the convention center and, and uh, the success of, of the shows they have there, bringing people in from out of out of town and out of state. Um, they're, they're eating in the restaurants, they're shopping in the shops, they're staying in, in our hotels. And as a result, restaurateurs have taken note of that. And they're, they're, we're getting Restaurant Row, Meacham Road is going to be Restaurant R Row, the west side of Meacham from Higgins North all the way to, to the tollway. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I heard uh, David Burke's new place is coming in. That, 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 that'll be really exciting they, to They've have. opened uh, their, their high-end uh, steakhouse. Uh, we could use more high-end steakhouses. We have, we, have, we have Chicago Prime. Sure. We, we have Zeal. So we have... Uh, uh, a few more than, 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 than other towns might have, but still, you can always have more restaurants. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with restaurants. And it's nice to have a restaurant row. I think uh, you found in, in with restaurants a lot of times, you get the hot spot and it, it builds. You know, in the old days, there was some restaurants kind of looked to have their distance between them. Now it seems like they do, like you're- Yeah, they cluster. They cluster quite a bit. Yeah, That's yeah. great. So 2014 finished up strong. What, uh, what's our thoughts for 2015 for the village of Chambord? Well, you know, we're encouraged by our, our northern, northerly TIF district, uh, the, the properties that are roughly from south of the tollway, from the tollway north all the way to Algonquin and from uh, 53 all the way west to Rizal Road. Uh, the TIF district is going is to fund some high-end development that's, that's already taking place. Zurich American is, is right. locating their North American headquarters on the Motorola property. Uh, Sunstar, which is a... Uh, a J Japanese company, I believe, mm -hmm. is, is come in with, with, with their oral hygiene kind of products that they're manufacturing. They bought 80 acres from, from the Archdiocese. Okay. They're developing 40 of the 80, and, and there's the other 40 they're going to market themselves. So uh, it, it looks very, very encouraging. That's great. Yeah, it's real. I, I think real encouraging and smart of the, the village with the TIF district to make sure that we, we place ourselves in, in a path to be successful and make opportunities for these businesses like Sunstar and Zurich. You know, again, Zurich is a perfect example, I think. 2,500 jobs. Yeah, I mean, huge amount of jobs. You know, we're a past, uh, you know, client of Schomburg, obviously, and making sure we had room for them and, and, and had a space for them and, and the Morel property through the TIF district, I think it's a great win-win well, opportunity. I think the Park District programs are a big win-win for, for, <laughs> for the village, really. <laughs> Olympic Park, I mean, it, that's got to be a real gem for you guys. Yeah, it really is. You know, it's a, it's a credit to, uh, you know, Jerry Hanlon and the staff, and Gene, that go, go back a number of years, Olympic Park and the Sports Center both for us, uh, you know, as a vehicle for us, but then also, like you mentioned in your speech, the economic uh, impact they have on the village and the hotels and restaurants. I can't, you know, the number of people I run into in other communities that say, oh yeah, Olympic Park, you know, it, it's almost, you know, becoming, you know, Woodfield is always the quick, okay. oh, what yeah, is Schomburg yeah, about? Yeah. But now with families in Olympic Park and soccer, you know, it no. becomes that immediate, oh yeah, I remember being there, being close to Woodfield, and, and again, it, it, it does well for all oh, the businesses. It does well for us. I mean, especially, you know, we, we, we want to see you guys do, do more. Your sports center is doing very, very well, too, isn't yeah. it? That's an airport property. I don't know if people realize that. Yep, 
Yep, and, and you'll be happy to know as part of this year's projects for the Park District. You're kidding me. We're going to get some nice <laughs> visibility on the back of the building there. there. There was a a guy I ran into one time who had this great idea about putting, putting well, yeah, the name on the Well, yeah, because you're in a train, you're coming, you know, wait, wait, what's that big building over there? You know, what, what is it? Is it part of the is it part of the airport? Is it an airport hangar? Is, is, you know, what is it? Right. But, but you know, you advertise it because those people coming by on a, on a train, are, that, those are customers. Yeah, it's customers. And again, li like you said, especially with the sports market that we tap into, soccer and, and volleyball, in the tournaments that go to Sports Center, it, it's not just people from Schaumburg, Hoffman, Streamwood. I mean, Elgin, yeah. further west, that, that use that community. It's a regional community. try, too. It is, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know I heard a couple of things people will be happy about in the community. The, the legendary Trader Joe's is coming to Schaumburg, <laughs> so everybody, you know, that's the hot topic. Oh, and, yeah. uh, that's going to be a Trader Joe's that, that's uh, built from the ground up. Uh, other Trader Joe's are kind of storefront operations. And, and they, uh, you know, this, this is going to be a, kind of a, a bit of an experiment, I suspect. Right there, visibil vis visibility on Gulf Road. Right. So uh, not that far from Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a fantastic opportunity. I yeah. know, again, uh, a, lot, a lot of people have been waiting for that. And it's nice that uh, your team at the Village, I, I think, you know, kudos to them for staying on. You know the the vendors and the, and the the it takes a lot of hard work. We've got some, we've got some good, good some good people. Yeah, well, you guys have good people too. Yeah, you know? yeah very 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 thankful for that. A couple of things that were that are mentioned in the in the speech this morning, um, uh, talking a little bit about the the survey that was done. And I was very impressed to hear some of the numbers. You know, I, I'm you know born and raised in in Schaumburg and sure. raising my family there too. But the the survey, the attitude and interest survey that you guys did. Um, some of the resident numbers, I think 95% rated as a great place to raise a family. I think oh, that's, it is, it's, <laughs> it is it, it, but it's still, I think it's a great tribute to the job yeah. you guys do, making sure, you know, the, the proper infrastructures and amenities are in place to get those type of numbers. Uh, and I'm it, sure those people have kids who, who patronize the park district. True. Good point. You know? Good point. You know, with the swim pools that you guys have in the summertime, the uh, lumpy field, we talked about that. Right. The, the Heritage Farm site, Spring Valley is a gem. Spring Valley is a gem. Yeah, and we're, uh, you know, the, the Nature Museum went through some transformation. Sure. We opened up the windows in the back this year. Sure. And so, so I'm sure, sure. saw inside, and we're really proud of the property and proud no, of the... It's, the uh, it's a, it, uh, bragging rights in terms of having, yeah. having a nature center. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's a real nice, um, nice amenity for the park district. One, one of the a good indicator as to how well Schomburg is doing is in terms of retail sales. Uh, our vacancy rate at Streets of Woodfield is 1%. Wow. Our vacancy rate in, at Woodfield is some, on the order of th 3 to 4%. Our vacancy rate in, in uh, Woodfield uh, 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 Village Green is, again, 5%. Five per, five percent. So, so it's, you know, you're seeing a lot of activity, a lot of commercial activity. We generate more, more retail sales in Schomburg than any, anywhere in the state of Illinois outside the city of Chicago. Yeah, that's amazing, Stan. I know when I go to conferences and, and people talk about Schaumburg and the different communities within Illinois. I think people are still somewhat surprised to hear those type of stats and how how uh, a major ec economic inf uh, uh, force Schaumburg is in it itself, itself. We have more Japanese companies than anyone in the state of Illinois. Amazing. Matter, I, I attended a, a function at, at uh, the, the convention center on Sunday. It was the, the annual New Year's celebration for, for, uh, for J Japanese uh, business people. 500 people there. Wow. You know, and, and that's Chicago. Japanese Chamber of Commerce coming here to Schaumburg. You know, they, they, love, they love our hotel, they love the amenities, they, and, and that's great, that's great. Yeah, that's an amazing, amazing stand. I know, I know a lot of people too in, in the village with Septemberfest, the outside pavilion that you highlighted, I think that's been received so well. Oh, it looks great, everybody. doesn't it? It looks great, and it's the whole Prairie Center for Arts campus there. I think you guys have done well, such an know, outstanding yeah, job. Yeah, but so, so have you. you know, we have a partnership with you on a Summer Breeze concert. <laughs> the Summer Breeze concert you know? has gone very, very well. Oh, yeah. we're, we're happy to be partners with you in that. What, anything else new for 2015 that we can look forward to? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I know you mentioned one of the breakfast plays coming in. To a lot of people, I, I, I know, Applebee's, talking uh, about the town square. Uh, yeah. In, in, in Applebee's looks like there's gonna there's, somebody's got a contract on that. It's okay. not, not been finalized yet, but it, it sounds like it might be a breakfast place there. Oh, great. No, I, I you know, I, I can just guess what it might be, but I, I don't want to... No, you know. no, I think as long as people in the community realize that, that the village is working hard to fill those spots and, and at Town Dom Square... And at Dominic's store is at, at Town Square, there's, there were actually two buyers. Oh, that's and, great to hear. And, and, and one of them was, was a food store and the other one was, uh, was not a food store. It was, it was actually a, mo a movie theater. Really? Huh. I mean, which are, it's kind of interesting, but I think that neighborhood deserves a food store more than an... <laughs> I, I, would, I would tend to theater, agree with that. You know. As a, as a shopper of groceries, well, especially <laughs> since, since, since that residential development at the northwest corner, right? They're, they're, they're 
are selling like crazy. Yeah, it's gangbusters. It's oh, yeah. nice to see right. those houses being done. You know, it's funny that you mentioned the, the, the movie because I was happy to see, you know, Streets of Woodfield, the, uh, the infrastructure that they're going to do sure. for the movie theaters. I think, you know, again, whenever you have a tenant that's willing to reinvest, obviously Woodfield's going to go through a huge transformation, sure. you know, with some of their infrastructure. I think that really bodes well. A lot of interior well. stuff going to get redone as far as Woodfield. Bring, brings, it, brings it up to, to pleasant... Um, Present day right. architecture. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And again, it's it's so nice to go into Woodfield in the holidays and, and see it's such a, a busy place and, and everybody getting their shopping needs done there is a great thing to see. Yeah. And at D David Burke Steakhouse, I, I've driven past it a, a couple of times when it looks like, like it's been accepted by the community. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, good, and good I place to take corporate people. For sure. I mean, we, you, you always need enough of those spots. You know, one of the other things I just wanted to make sure we, we, we highlight as we finish up too, but the, the road infrastructure. And, and again, I think the village has done such a great job. The barrington Schomburg, uh interchange, you know, it, it obviously, you know, was a little bit hard to get through when it's under construction. But now I think everybody appreciates the, the, the time and the work that was done into that planning. There's a mayor, Charleston, South, uh, uh, South Carolina. Uh, who, who puts it well, he said, that, don't be afraid to bring beauty into the public realm. Right. That was Joe Riley, who's uh, okay. been, been mayor forever in, in, in Charleston and just a, a real forward thinker. Thinker, But that's, that's part of economic development, too. And right. You, you make, make your town attractive for people who, who want to live here, who want to work here. Uh, you make it look, look good, make it look nice. Sure. You, you know. uh, that, that's an investment in economic development right. you know, because it, it's a difference between what, what you have and what other town might, might, you know, might have. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other transportation piece I just wanted to mention and was touched on this morning too, obviously the construction on Roselle and the bridge and Meacham and the bridge, but then the, the, your staff talked about that there will be a bike uh, trail bridge there, and I think that's just a huge infrastructure and, and really important, you know, obviously the, the bridge to gap between the, the north and south and Harper especially for, for, for those residents and, and students go, that want to take a bike up to Harper to have well, that we're, opportunity. We're a bicycle-friendly community, certainly, and that's, that's, that's right. important to, to uh, give people an option to be able to use bicycles. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's a great great thing. I think so, too. Yeah. Well, we're ju I'm just about done with my questions. Anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, how old is Dave Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been on the board 42 years, so I guess he's he, he's a couple years older than that. <laughs> is that the politically correct answer right out of the, out of that's, the that's executive director? That's close, that's close enough. <laughs> well, and I'll really, th you know, thank you so much for all you do for the village as a resident, as, as a Schomburg staff person. We really appreciate the hard work that you and your staff do. And, and again, thanks for coming well, in this morning. Thanks for being such a great partner. Thanks. You're quite welcome. We'll continue the good work. Okay. We'll be right back after these messages. Meineke Recreation Center, the place to be to get in shape. Meineke offers a new fitness room with modern equipment, open gym, an indoor running track, and a new dance room. Work off those extra pounds, get active, and stay fit at the Schaumburg Park District's renovated Meineke Recreation Center. Visit www.parkfun.com to learn about membership options. Welcome back to Because. I'm here with Todd King. He's our superintendent of parks for the Schaumburg Park District. Todd, welcome to Because. Thanks for coming on this morning. Thanks. So we want to talk a little bit about ice skating options and uh, talk about what we ha had in the past as far as skating options in the district. Sure. Um, so in the past, we've used the ponds at some of the parks and, uh, and then the Timbercrest hockey rink that's kind of more set up for rollerblading. Right. Um, and some of the issues that we've had in the past with the, with the ponds is the weather. You know, it's right. weather dependent. Um, the ponds have runoff from the streets, so a lot of salt and water gets into those, and we have soft spots. Sure. And um, with public safety, you know, we want to make sure the, par the ponds are safe before we open them. Um, so kind of what um, our rule of thumb is eight inches of good, hard, clear ice right. um, before we open them, which has been difficult to achieve with the you know, the sure. warmer summer or warmer winters. Um, last year was a great year. We had we had lots of good cold weather, but right. kind of an uh, anomaly. Yeah, um, and it was so cold on some of those years to get the eight inches that it was almost too cold to use at right, times. Right. So yeah, yeah. So it's when it's below zero thing. for days, on you know, it's not much fun to skate. But um, so that's sure. that's kind of what we've done in the past. Okay, and what are what are the the new options to be able to. Uh, Yep. Hopefully rectify that moving forward. Right. So this year what we looked at was putting some artificial rinks outdoors. Um, and some of the sites we looked at, we looked at the Boomer Stadium parking lot. 
we had some issues with the, the drainage. Mm -hmm. um, the, the parking lots are pitched to, you know, to not have water sitting on them. Um, there's a lot of pitch at the boomers, so we looked at Olympic Park. A um, little less pitch because the parking lot's a little smaller. Sure. Um, access, we have parking, we have gates. If it's not open, if it's not frozen, we can gate it off and kind of keep people out of there until it's ready. Um, we have lights mm -hmm. in the parking lot, so um, it seemed like a good location um, to put the rinks at. Great. So Olympic is the, the new destination yep. for these new artificial rinks. And what, uh, what kind of size are we dealing with as far as the rink size? Sure. Um, we have two, two rinks right now. Um, one's a little smaller just for maybe little, little guys and people that just want to skate. Um, it's uh, roughly 60 by 40. Um, and then a larger rink uh, right next to it, um, 140 by 70. So it's a good size rink. Yeah, Any, I mean, is, is skating becoming more popular, do you think? Or? Well, I think with the success of the Blackhawks, <laughs> I think everybody's into skating. So, um, you know, I, I, I think definitely that there's a lot more people that are into it. Yeah, so, um, yeah and, and, and as far as park staff, and, and you mentioned uh, they'll be open, the gates will be open when we, we deem that the, the, right. the rinks are usable? Sure, when, the, when we got a good thickness of ice, we'll keep them open. Um, regular park hours, 7 in the morning to 11 at night Okay, um, is the hours for the Great. park. Yeah, and, and as far as usage, has we gotten a decent amount of usage yet, or have you seen? You know, we set them up right before Christmas, and the weather just didn't cooperate. We didn't get that cold weather till after the first of the year. Right. Um, after we've we've had them open for about two weeks now, um, they were frozen all the way through. Unfortunately, it was super cold out. Sure. You know that that week. Uh, right after the first and we didn't get a whole lot of use out of them but now it seems to be some people using them before and after or after school and early evening yeah, hours. And we're, we're, looks like we're due for a patch of weather that's right around freezing so right. hopefully the, the, the extreme cold the last week will make for a good base moving yeah, forward. Yeah and we're putting another coat on them today oh, making great. them a little smoother trying to get uh, you know a nice surface for people to skate on whether they're playing hockey or just skating. Great, great. Well, Todd, I appreciate you stopping by the show and, and telling, you, telling us what's new with, the, with the ice skating conditions in Schaumburg and uh, appreciate all the hard work you and your staff do, keeping our facilities and the lots clean and all that, uh, that stuff as well. So, again, thanks for stopping by. Thanks. We'll be right back after these messages. This is Alyssa at the Meineke Recreation Center. We also have full service fitness centers at the Community Recreation Center as well as Schomburg Tennis Plus. At each full service fitness center we offer personal training. We currently have seven personal trainers on staff and they offer a variety of different training packages. We have individual one hour sessions as well as express 30 minute sessions. And in addition to training one on one, you can also train with a partner or in a group setting. Um, if you're interested in personal training, all you have to do is fill out a personal trainer form and turn it into either of the three buildings. In addition to offering personal training at each facility, we have a variety of group fitness classes. Let's head downstairs and meet an instructor and talk to some of the participants. What are your names? Francisco. And Francisco too. Both Francisco's. Father. <laughs> Father and son duo. So what did you guys think of class today? You know, I thought it was pretty easy at first, and then five minutes went by, and I <laughs> wish it was over. Was this your first time taking this class? Yeah, we found out about it from the front desk about the free week. Awesome. And so it's been a big, hectic beginning of the first year, but we're coming tomorrow for some more. Awesome. How are you guys feeling? Refreshing. Refreshing. <laughs> great. You feel great? Yeah, I feel good when I come here. Very good. And so you guys have been participating in our fitness classes for how long? Well, I've been coming here for over 20 years. Yep. Excellent. And Always to Meineke? Yeah. Always to Meineke, yes. And I love Lynn's classes. She works you hard, but she also, um, you know, kind of tailors it to each person mm -hmm. if you need help. So it's a good workout. Good. And how long have you been working about out here? About 10 years. Ten about years. 10 years. Oh, about about 15. Nice. So you guys are all very much regulars. Yes, very good. 
kind yep. of instructor. She gives you the highs and the lows, and you do what you can do. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, very good. Good. And what is your favorite thing about taking a group fitness class? Well, it kind of we kind of all help each other because it's like if you're uh, you know kind of sluggish in the morning, you're like, oh, do I want to go? And then you see the people that you wouldn't normally see. You know, these are my like workout buddies now, and mm -hmm. so it's it's really good to see them. And then you're like, oh, I'm glad I came. So yeah. good, so yeah. that camaraderie. Uh -huh. And I think it's accountability mm -hmm. because you know that if you don't show, then they'll ask you why. <laughs> <laughs> talking to Lynn, one of the fitness instructors. She just finished teaching a basic training class. Can you tell us a little bit about your class, Lynn? Yeah, it, it starts at 8.40, ends at 9.30, but it's a pretty intense uh, class. But I do give modifications for anybody that's new. We go with a basic warm-up, and then we do um, cardio and strength back and forth. Two minutes cardio, one minute strength, just so that we don't get our heart rates to fall too far. And so we do that back and forth throughout the class, and then we do a 10-minute stretch cool-down. Um, and, we, you know, it's, it's a pretty good cool-down that everybody gets all stretched out. Sounds like a good total body workout. And in addition to teaching basic training here at Meineke, what other classes do you teach? Um, I teach a, a cardio class on Monday, a strength and stretch. And I teach um, step circuit and core and more. Out of all those classes, do you have a favorite? I really like um, basic training a lot because mm -hmm. it gets cardio strength all in one class. You get it all done. And how long have you been working for the Park District? Since 1986. <laughs> so you've been here a very long time, very dedicated to teaching our patrons. Yes. How long have you been teaching fitness? Uh, since 86. This is Alyssa at the CRC Fitness Center. This is the district's largest fitness center, and as you can see, we have the variety of cardiovascular equipment, strength training equipment, and we also have a free weight area. In this building, we also have a fitness studio and we have a cycle studio. This is where a lot of our group fitness classes take place. Later this year, we're also going to be building a second fitness studio and a TRX studio as well. Let's head downstairs and check out Tabata Boot Camp. Rachel, a fitness instructor, she just finished teaching Tabata Boot Camp. How was class? It was great. We had a great turnout. This is free week on this cold day. I appreciate the people coming out. Awesome. Uh, tell us uh, what Tabata Boot Camp is. Tabata Boot Camp is a high intensity interval training class where we work in periods of four minute blocks, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds of rest. I vary from sometimes we do four different exercises during that period, sometimes we stick with one. I try to make the class interesting, stick with um, that same premise of the format, but we use a variety of equipment and a variety of different exercise each and every class. And I try to modify so I make it for everybody and every ability level. Sounds great. Sounds like a very challenging class, but it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Tell the viewers what other classes you teach here at the Park District. Sure. Um, I'm at CRC two days a week, Mondays and Fridays. I teach a kickboxing class called Kick Punch Crunch. Um, and that again is kind of a, a, an opportunity where we do some athletic drills as well as some kickboxing. Um, I keep it real simple but work you really hard. I teach a core and more class where we're working, um, I, I really focus on um, abs and legs mostly. But again, I like to play with that class too. Sometimes it's core, sometimes it's more. Um, and then I teach Tabata Boot Camp here on Fridays. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, I'm over at Meineke bright and early in the morning, 6 a.m. And I teach those same three formats. Outside the CRC Fitness Studio, and I'm here with Cindy. She just finished a Tabata Boot Camp class. How are you feeling? Fantastic. And what type of workout was it? It was uh, Tabata boot camp where we do 20-minute uh, intervals and um, 10 second, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, variety of, of items, weightlifting, um, cardio, mm -hmm. bunch of stuff. Sounds like an exciting workout. It was great. Would you say that's one of your favorite classes to take? It's definitely one of my favorite that's classes. Favorite. Yeah. Do you have any other favorites? I like the corn more that okay. she does. It's a great, great follow-up to um, 
the another class that she does on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's called Kick Punch Crunch, and that's another great one. And how long have you been participating in fitness classes? I've been coming for about five years. Awesome. So, Very good. Yeah. Julie, a fitness instructor, she just finished teaching a Club 55 class. Julie, tell us a little bit about your class. It's um, for Club 55, so 55 and older. We do a little strength and um, cardio conditioning. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes we take it to the floor, do some abs on the floor, and then a nice stretch at the end. Very nice. And what other classes do you teach at the Park District? I teach the Club 55. I teach a bar basics class, which is um, based on the ballet bar and a lot of strength and toning. And then uh, Zumba Gold for, again, 55 or older, and uh, Les Mills Body Pump, which is a strength class. <laughs> awesome. Um, what advice do you have for those that have some New Year resolutions for health and fitness? I think a great way to keep those resolutions would be to get into the Park District. We offer so many classes that they could take anything to work on strength, work on cardio, and there's a, it's fun to work, without, work out with other people. Awesome. And what is your favorite thing about teaching group fitness? I love when the class gets involved and I like to see the changes in the people and to see them having fun. I'm talking to Ilse and she just finished taking a group fitness class. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling all exuberated <laughs> <laughs> and hot. <laughs> so you're feeling pretty good? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what classes you take uh, during the week. I take the one with Julia that's power and what's it called? Uh, st body. Strong heart and body. Body, yeah. And uh, then that's aerobics and then on Friday with uh, Colette. Mm -hmm. And I used to take it three times, but you know, I'm just, sad, but I'm just about a little getting older. <laughs> but uh, now I just take twice. Twice a week. And what do you like most about taking group fitness classes here? Because togetherness and the way I feel afterwards and balancing everything seems like my body is doing better, you know? Good. So you feel pretty good. Yes. Four. talking to June and she just finished taking a fitness class. June, how are you feeling this morning? Really good, thank you very much. And do you take fitness classes very often? A couple times a week. Okay. And I love Julie's class and Andrea's class. Okay. Their, their personalities are just darling. Oh. And they really work you out. You can, you can go as slow as you want if you're you know, not in such good shape or you can go as fast as you want. Mm -hmm. So it it's, fits everybody's from 55 to 85. <laughs> This is Alyssa at the CRC Fitness Center. Thank you for watching our show. To recap, we have three full service fitness centers at CRC, STP, and Meineke. At all three locations, we offer group fitness classes as well as personal training. Something that you didn't see is our aqua fitness classes. We have aqua classes at both CRC and STP, and in the summer, we also offer outdoor aqua fitness classes at the Bach Pool. A couple newer classes that we are offering are called Ageless Grace and another one called BOSU Mobility and Stability. Ageless Grace is a seated chair fitness class for our active older adults and the BOSU Mobility and Stability class is a class designed to help improve balance. If you have a New Year's resolution and you're looking to improve your health and fitness, come on over to the Schomburg Park District. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget, take time for fun.